Good morning, good morning YouTube. Today is November 3rd. It is a Saturday, so I hope you guys have had an incredible, incredible week. I am in the clinic, uh, or I was in the clinic this past week, so I have the weekend off. So I have some exciting news, and that is that I am running an ultra marathon tomorrow. So it is a 30 mile trail uh, marathon in Tulsa, Oklahoma called Turdy and Oh, called turkey and taters so it should be a great time but what I want to do in this video is show you guys a full day of eating of carb loading for either a marathon an ultra marathon or any type of insane endurance event where you're going to be exercising for a very prolonged period alright so before I get to this video I want you guys to know that you are greatly greatly loved and that you are wonderfully and beautifully created and that you are capable of far more than you could ever imagine. Okay, so before I tell you the reason that I'm doing all this carb loading and stuff and kind of the science behind it, I'm going to get my first meal together because I actually have an Instagram live session going on at about 9 a.m. So I have about two and a half hours before I get to that. So let me get my breakfast together and then I'll talk to you guys about the science behind carb loading. Alright, let's check it out. So here we have two pieces of cinnamon bread. We have two servings of pretzels, which I'm actually going to be putting in my oatmeal cup of coffee. Um, the oatmeal there is three servings of oatmeal, so 120 grams of oatmeal with cinnamon and sugar-free syrup. You could have used regular syrup. You need the carbs anyway. And then two servings of honey bunches of oats. Um, I think this might be maybe the cinnamon clusters kind. I can't remember exactly. And then I have my almond breeze over there. And so I try to make my morning meal one of my biggest meals. And why is just so that I have more time to digest it and kind of help prevent GI distresses during my race tomorrow. So if we see here my breakfast, I have it all logged. I don't know if you guys can see that, so I'll set it down and do it from over here. So um, I have it all logged here. Yeah, make sure I have everything, the bread, the pretzels, the oats, almond milk, um, the creamer, and that comes up to 1,250 calories. I'm not 100% how many carbohydrates, but definitely quite a few. I would check, but I've already logged some of the stuff I'm eating the rest of the day. All right, guys, so that is my breakfast. So let me get to eating this, and then we can talk a little bit about carb loading. All right, guys, so I wanted to take the next few minutes to discuss carb loading. And so why would I even want to discuss this? Well, in terms of marathon runners or ultra marathoners, carb loading is very, very important because it is one of the proposed mechanisms that keep us from hitting the wall. And any marathon runner knows what I'm talking about when I talk about the dreaded wall that usually occurs anywhere between mile 18 and 22. And it's at this point where you, you start hitting the wall where your performance drastically decreases and your uh, marathon pace or your mile pace starts to creep, creep, creep down very slowly. And where you were maybe running a seven minute pace has now turned into a nine minute pace. So carb loading, this is a dietary practice that's used by elite and non-elite athletes all across the world to hopefully aid in the event performance. And it's, this concept of carb loading is definitely not a new one. Um, it was started way back, I believe, in even the early 1960s when the uh, board needle was redeveloped in which... At this point, scientists took biopsies from different muscle tissues to see how much uh, our muscles were affected or saturated with carbohydrates following a large carbohydrate meal. And this really helped in terms of performance for working, but then also for athletes at this time as well. And then in the 1990s, uh, they were studying athletes who would be carb loaded, and they did it by a mechanism of depleting carbs three days before and then you know having a very large carb meal either the day before or a couple days before and they believe by depleting carbs first and then loading up with a lot of carbs you could kind of super saturate your carb storage which isn't exactly true but anyway that was just to point out that carb loading is not something that's new and it has been around for a very very long time 
So there has been a vast number of studies that's been conducted on carb loading. And through research, it's been confirmed that when it is done properly, carb loading does work, especially for the athlete who is going to be competing at very high intensities. So carb loading is used to increase or elevate our liver glycogen, or actually completely top off our liver glycogen, but then also to elevate our muscle glycogen content to much higher than what it is normally done. There was a study conducted in 1996 by Ackerman and colleagues um, that exam examined Swedish hockey players. Um, they were randomly split, split up into two different groups. One of the groups were given a high-carb diet, um, and then the other group was just given a regular diet or a lower-carb diet. Um, the players who consumed this uh, carbohydrate-rich diet showed improvement in pretty much all areas of performance, such as speed, um, distance, and time skating, compared to the ones on a regular diet. There's also another study that was done to test the effect of carb loading on my mountain biker uh, participants. And I actually found this one interesting in which I think runners could maybe correlate to a 5k or a 10k um, as, com as compared to a marathon. And they took these two different groups, a high carb group um, which consisted of 3 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram and then a lower carb carbohydrate group which was just 1 gram per kilogram of body weight. And the researchers found that initially the, the competitors consuming the lower carbohydrate diet performed better um, and had a lot more energy during the first lap of the course. But, interesting enough, that by lap four, the high carbohydrate group racers were ahead. And they found out that in the end, the high carbohydrate uh, diet racers had about a 3% increase in performance compared to the lower carbohydrate diet racers. And that 3% increase may not seem that uh, significant, but if you think about it, 3% decrease in marathon time. If you're running a three hour marathon, that is a very significant amount of time to decrease your marathon time by carb loading. So these are just two studies that I, um, you know, that I'm citing or talking about, but there have been multiple other studies that have shown the benefit of carbohydrates and carbohydrate loading. So what I found interesting about that last study is that you could propose that you do not need to carb load for these shorter races uh, given that the performers actually did better in a lower carbohydrate group when they were only doing one lap as compared to the four laps. And you know this could be from a variety of different reasons such as we weigh more when we carb load because for every gram of carbohydrates we hold about 2.7 grams of water. And so maybe they were a little bit lighter at the start of their race and that they were able to perform um, better with more efficiency efficiency being lighter and not holding so much water. So you might take away from this that for shorter races you do not need to carb load outside of what you are generally um, carb loaded with but then for the longer durations maybe a half marathon or a marathon it would be beneficial to carb load and have a higher um, diet in carbohydrates. And lastly, I'll talk about how to go about carb loading. So there was actually a pretty big study done by Benjamin Rappaport out of Massachusetts. And uh, I think Harvard even has published maybe the study some. But he took your VO2 max, the size of your thigh muscle, and your marathon pace to kind of conduct a formula to show how much carbohydrates you would need to perform in the marathon at the pace you wanted for that time frame. Now, that is very scientific and a formula that you can find online if you want. Just look up Benjamin Rappaport and use that formula. If you do not want to do that and want to go about it more of a general rule of thumb way approach, um, but not be quite as accurate, then for beginners, I would recommend doing 7 grams of carbohydrates per kilogram, um, <clears throat> either one day before or you could even do three days before. Uh, your race to make sure that you are fully topped off and completely carb loaded. Now that's on the lower end of the spectrum. On the higher end of the spectrum or if you are really shooting for a PR or a well-trained athlete, I would say you could go even up to the 12 um, gram per kilogram of carbohydrates before your race. Now this is to make sure that you are completely 100% carb loaded, topped off as much as possible. All your muscle glycogen are filled with carbohydrates. Now, again, if you have not, never done this before, I would highly, highly recommend experimenting with this either on your tempo runs or pretty much any run where you are going to be running more than 90 minutes. And by doing this, you should be able to perform 
at a very high capacity of anywhere from 70 to 85 percent of your VO2 max for a very extended period based off of your carb loading. Now also you may need additional carbs throughout your race which your body can only absorb anywhere from 200 to 350 uh, grams of carbohydrates an hour so that's just about how much I would consume during your race in the form of whatever carbohydrate works best for you. Now with carb loading there could be adverse effects so I'll talk about them shortly. The number one uh, would be GI distress. It might cause some diarrhea or some upset, upset stomach. That is why I highly recommend you practicing it before you go on an actual race. The second is weight gain. As I talked about before the more carbohydrates you have the more weight you will be holding so at the start of your race you may not be running with as much efficiency as what you will towards the end of your race once you lose some of that weight um, outside of that um, there is a potential for weight gain as well but this would be most generally is if in your diet if you add all these extra calories and extra carbohydrates to your diet already Instead, what you should do is decrease your other macronutrients such as fats and proteins to allow for this super compensation or super carb loading so that your total calories remain almost the same to where you're eating at maintenance or just maybe 500 calories or so above your maintenance, um, but it is strictly of carbohydrates. So again, in short, studies have shown that carbohydrate loading is very, very beneficial. Um, make sure you practice with it before you do it on race day. And second, what I recommend on the low end is 7 uh, grams of carbohydrates per kilogram on the very low end, or on the high end, 12 grams per kilogram of carbohydrates uh, to make sure that you are completely carb loaded and ready to kick some butt on your marathons. If you have any questions at all about carb loading, uh, or more of the science behind it, please make sure to comment below and I would love to help out. I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the video. So I'm not going to be eating this right now, but I am going to be preparing it right now. So I'll show you guys what it is. We have some pearl couscous. So it's going to be my lunch and I'm going to do three servings of that. If we check it out here, we have a 190 calories. Um, it's going to have about 40 grams of carbs per serving, 1 gram of fat, and 6 grams of protein. So one serving is 50 grams, so we're just going to weigh out 150 grams of this. Come on. Almost. 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 Ah, oh, there we go. Perfect. 150 grams, three servings, tons of carbohydrates. It's gonna make for a good lunch, and then I haven't decided what kind of sauce I'm gonna put on it yet. So, there we go. Continuing on, on this carb load. And something I love about this is, well, I love couscous in general, and I feel like I run very well off of couscous more than other things. I'm not sure why, um, but it's super easy to cook. It takes about 10 minutes, ready to rock and roll. So, there's no excuse. Everyone has time, which of course I have time, I have the day off, but everyone has time to do all this stuff. It doesn't take that much time. You could make easy couscous. They even have couscous that takes uh, three minutes to make. Super nice. And then another thing, which I'm not eating today just because it has a little bit more fat, but something that's super fast and an easy way to carb load are these instant Idahoan mashed potatoes. It takes literally just as long as it takes to boil water and they're made and they're pretty delicious. So yeah, you can definitely continue to carb load, continue to stay on your meal plan while in medical school having a work life, or whatever else it is that you do. Yeah, we can do it. Uh, go follow Tommy Martin at uh, Dr. Tommy Martin. Um, oh, Sarah, sorry. Uh, All right, guys, so you can see that the live session was great, but I got kicked off like a thousand times. I don't know what was going on with my Instagram. So that right there is Dr. Mike underscore MD. Make sure you go follow him on Instagram. It was a great doing a live session with him, but I hated that my Instagram kept dying. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys my next meal. So here it is. It's all cooked up and ready to eat. It is three servings of that pearl couscous. So just about 600 calories. About to devour that and then get everything packed up. I have not done enough stuff before Phoebe gets off work. So I really need to get going, but I hope you guys have had a blessed, 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 blessed day, and I'll see you guys soon.
Okay, okay, so I'm back. And I actually have not done anything I said I was gonna do. Um, except for eat the food. I still need to clean up and stuff before Phoebe gets home. But I'm packing a little bit, so I just want to show you guys my pre-ultra marathon kit. Or, yeah, kit. Pre-ultra marathon kit, check it out. Okay, so what we have here is the pre-workout, pre-caged. I will be taking that about an hour before the ultra, so I'll be chugging that about 5.30 tomorrow morning. Pro Max, that's gonna be going in my belly about in 45 minutes before the ultra. Propel, that's just what I'm gonna be sipping on between now and tomorrow. Orbit, I'm gonna be having probably five or six sticks throughout this ultra. And then in cage, that is going to be going in these lovely bottles um, that I'm gonna be having on my ultra marathon. Um, so I'll fill them both up with that, and then I'll probably fill them up again at the halfway point. And those cliff bars are just gonna be on me in case I need some fuel. So, another thing is that your body, through activity, can only take in about 260 to 300 calories every hour and actually absorb it. And so, really that would be one Pro Max bar, or one Cliff bar, or about three energy gels, which I'm not gonna use those, I'm gonna, they're kind of expensive, so I'm gonna eat these, and I like the Pro Max bars better anyway. So, yeah, I'll only need, depending on how long it takes, between four and six hours, that means, one, two, three, 300. So obviously, Math is not my strong suit right now. So that means I would just need maybe between four and six of these bars and things of that uh, nature throughout the race, but they do have eight stops as well. So I should be well fueled. All right now, I'm gonna get to doing everything. I'll be back. She has the um, Memphis Marathon coming up, which I'm running it as well. Um, she's not gonna run this one just because she was afraid of getting injured. Um, so we were at Subway and she just asked if I was a vlogger and so I told her that I did have a small YouTube channel and I wanted her to be able to say hi to everyone. Hi. <laughs> she is making me a delicious Subway sandwich. I'm going to have a veggie delight on Italian herbs and cheese. I'm pretty much going to do all the vegetables um, except for onion. Oh, actually, can I get it toasted? I forgot to tell you that. I'm sorry. I'm super sorry. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna do a an Italian or a Italian herbs and cheese veggie delight, no meat or anything, all carbs for tomorrow's ultra. And guess who else is with me? Uh... Hi, I'll have lettuce, please. Lettuce and cucumber. Alright, so that so that's another addition to the full day of eating for this ultra marathon. Tons and tons and tons of carbs. All right, guys, and since this video is primarily a full day of eating, I'm not going to do any more vlogging during Phoebe and I's road trip until we get to dinner where we're supposed to go to some great pasta place. So I'm going to sign off for now, and Phoebe and I are going to get headed to Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right, guys, so we finally made it to the hotel. Check out my packet that Phoebe's holding. Oh yeah, number 21, and they give us some... Run gum. Run gum. Caffeine, taurine, B vitamins. So I have to apologize, I did not get to film dinner because I left the camera in the car and I forgot. But I we had bruschetta for an appetizer that they give us for free. We had a bread basket, which I ate three breadsticks. And then I had eggplant parmesan with angel hair pasta, which was delicious. I had some bites of Phoebe's meal, which was really good as well. And then I had three Andes mints. Uh, and then I ate some Chex Mix on the way here, um, which I have not, that I didn't record either. So I was going to show you guys my macros and calories so far. So if we check it out here, you can see that my calories are at 3,924. And we go to my nutrition. Oh. What was that? Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse came to join us and say hi. Um, and then we can see my carbohydrates right now. You guys know I'm supposed to eat around 800, and so currently they are 737. So it looks like I have about 60 more to eat, give or take. Now, obviously, not everything's been weighed out. Not everything's been measured perfectly. So it could be off by a little bit, but we know that that is pretty close. And... 
That's why he got hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that my beautiful wife uh, talked me into getting. No, I didn't. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so I think that's going to be it for this video. So I'm going to hang out, maybe watch some football with my beautiful wife, if she allows. And then I'll film this uh, race tomorrow. You guys can see how it goes. She actually probably does watch more football than I do. Uh, yeah, so the starting time tomorrow is 6.30. Oh, and it's raining outside right now. Um, I was about to end the video, but, uh, oh, well, you guys cannot see anything. But if you could see out there, it's raining currently. So it should make this trail race more fun. But, yeah, so tomorrow's race will be on a different video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of uh, a full day of eating carb loading for an ultra marathon while in residency. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, please comment below. And to end the video, I want you guys to know that you are greatly, greatly loved and that you are wonderfully and beautifully created and that you are capable of far more than you could ever imagine.